Hey, good evening. Happy Friday. It's time for Three Chord Live and Freeology Friday. And it's been an interesting week. <laughs> Let me say that. It's, it's been a good week. Uh, my music's a little too rowdy. Y'all hang on for a second. Um, and also, let me do this real quick, too. I'm going to put my glasses back on because I need to make sure that I get these things share the sharing going on here. And then we'll go ahead and get started. I hope all of y'all are having a fantastic week. And I want to share this in a group. And put it in three chord live because I wanted to be live in three chord live. Big Crave, what up, dog? And then let's see, I want to share it also to the Goma. And hey, Edith, how you doing? Margaret, how you doing? So glad that you guys chose to join me on a Friday evening. It's, uh, this is Friday, and you can be doing a whole bunch of cooler things. Hang on, just this one more. All right. Cool, my man Kyle Butler in the house. K Butter, man, it was good seeing you this weekend. We gotta uh, figure out how to do these like uh, these hookups more often. I'm gonna change this just a little bit. Oh, and there goes my microphone. Man, I'm having technical difficulties and I haven't even started drinking yet. Uh, which the libation of the evening is a Kepe Tempranillo. It's a Spanish red wine. I, it's one of my favorites. I really love this. Uh, it's a good, you know, chill out kind of wine. And I'm in a chill out kind of mood. Um, so if you've been following this the last couple of weeks, well, oh, for, forgive me, didn't do my introductions. This Three Court Live and Three Court Live consists of some really awesome people. On Mondays is Bill Thrasher. On Tuesdays, Michelle Brown and Tammy Wilson. On Wednesdays, Catherine Toon. On Thursdays, Kyle Butler, where you at, dog? Uh, and on Fridays, it's Freeology Friday, and that's me. Uh, I'm also part of the Global Online Ministry Alliance, which consists of Lynn Bennett Jr., Kyle Butler, Catherine Toon, Michael Porter, myself, and Mike Zinker, and Keith Giles. And some really cool folks with some really cool stuff to say, and you really need to plug into this because... Shit, they're just cool, man. So, anyway, I'm gonna take my glasses off now because I, I can actually, I can look on, on the screen and I can see everything without, um, you know, having to fish for my glasses and all of that. Um, old people problems. <laughs> anyway, um, if you've been following this, the last couple of weeks, I, I, I talked two weeks ago about confidence and how love instills confidence and then last week I talked about how confidence helps you build connections because when you are confident about something people want to connect with you okay and today I'm wrapping this up by talking about courage courage like the Cowardly Lion and the Wizard of Oz. Courage. And why courage is not only a fruit of love, but it's an important part of your personal arsenal. Okay? So, with that being said, you are listening to Narada Michael Walden's Victory for the Hero Soldiers. This is one of my favorite, favorite songs of all time. Um, but when I, when I think about being of good courage, this song 
comes to mind. It's something that it just it it stirs something up inside of me, and it, and it gets me. Um, it just gets me going. And I want to say this, you know, because it is easy to confuse confidence and courage because they're actually two different things. You see, confidence will attract people to you, but courage will give others boldness to go into places, to go into atmospheres, to go into dimensions that they ordinarily would not go. See, there's a thing about, about combat, that if you understand combat, people don't get behind someone who they feel lacks courage. People don't want to go into combat with people who are cowardly, okay? It's important that you have courage. But here's the thing. <laughs> if you don't have confidence and you haven't made sufficient connections, then your courage is probably lacking. And let me say this for the record, that this right here to me is just a libation. I like the taste of it. I don't drink to get drunk or anything. I don't even drink to get high. I really drink because I enjoy it. But there's some people that see this as liquid courage. And if you've ever spent any time in bars or clubs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because some, some people get a few of these up in them and, and, and they, you know, are prone to write checks with their mouth that their ass can't cash. So I want to talk about courage, right? And why courage, courage is so important. And, and here's the thing. There are some really courageous people on Facebook. I've met some really courageous people because they not only have the ability to influence, but they have the ability to show a degree of bravery, a degree of boldness that brings others in to follow. And that's, that's the key. Because listen, you can have confidence in your ability to speak, but you have to have courage in order to march in the face of racist police officers, dogs, and fire hoses. You see the difference? Because there were a lot of people in the civil rights movement that had this oratory excellence, that they were able to speak things well. They were able to enunciate and articulate and they were able to uh, verbalize things. But, but the thing is that when you're actually going into a combat, a hostile situation, that's different. And not everybody has that. But I want you to know that you have it in you. Each and every one of us is wired for confidence, is wired to be connected, and is wired to be courageous. God is not a coward. And he, she, source, universe, whatever you want to refer to as God, is bold. There's no timidity in God. And because you are created in that image and likeness that you have the same boldness that God has. Here's where it gets interesting, right? Because I've said that confidence will allow you to speak your destiny. But, but you see, the thing is, you have to be able to, you have to have courage to be able to take this vision into the places that it needs to go in order for it to be effective. And, and so that's where, where I'm getting today is that this courage, what does it mean to be courageous? And when you are courageous, that means you are able to take the confidence 
that you have in your ability to do a thing or to say a thing or to perform a task, but you're going to take that ability into a situation that may not be friendly to what it is that you're doing. And that's a special thing. But again, the good news is that you have that wired in you. You have courage baked into you. Don't let anybody, you know, fool you or, or lead you to believe that you don't. I mean, it's like you have this ability to basically lead people. And, and here's the thing. Every, people will say not everybody's a born leader. And I used to actually say that, but I actually believe that everybody is born with the capacity and the ability to lead. The thing is, is that you have to be able to take what you have inside of you and you have to unlock that value. You have to unlock that and make it available to the world. Okay? And that's really important. Hang on for a second because I need to pause because it says low network connection. And, okay. All right, uh, low network connection, but... There is a network connection, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, and keep going. It says that it's recording, and I'm going to trust that. But um, here's the thing. You are going to have to take what you know and be able to take it into places where it can make, where it can make an impact. And sometimes that means you will be taking what you know into places that have hostility toward what it is that you're doing, okay? And this is the other thing too. It, it, really, it really trips me out that there are people who like to throw stones. You know, who, you know what I mean? People who they say, don't, if you live in glass houses, don't throw stones. Well, there are people that actually dwell in glass houses and they like to throw stones but the reality is that they themselves have no stones. Yeah, I, I'm saying something there. There's a hidden meaning. I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let you figure it out. There's some people that have no stones. And what happens is these are people who are essentially keyboard warriors. They talk a good game. But when it comes time to performing, when it comes time to execution, they're lacking. Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to get beyond being a keyboard warrior if you are. Now, there are some people, and, I, and, and again, there, there are some folks out there like uh, man, my man Kyle Butler. Kyle is, and, and here's the thing about Kyle. Kyle is courageous without being cocky. And, and we need to get that because Kyle is not afraid to speak his mind and say what's, you know, what he's thinking. And he's not afraid to take it into difficult places, but Kyle's not a dick about it. And, and I have to admit, this is a place where I have room to grow because uh, not only am I not courageous, but sometimes I, I may be, maybe obnoxious. That's me. So when you're, when you are, uh, when you have courage, it's like you, you draw from the well of confidence and, and you take this confidence and you spread it out, which that causes people to be drawn unto you. See, you know, I, I like this. You know, Jesus said, and if I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Do you understand that if you're lifted up, that you'll draw people unto you? Aha, you didn't know that, did you? Because <laughs> Jesus wasn't just saying that for you. He's saying that, or not just saying that for himself. He was saying it for you. That you have to draw people unto you to help bring the vision or the dream or whatever it is that you have in your heart and your mind to pass. So this courage is basically confidence plus boldness. Write that down. That courage is confidence plus boldness. Because if you have confidence, that's great. You know that you know what you know how to do. You, you're confident. But you may need to speak to some people that may not want to immediately hear your message. 
And that's the hard part. This is where, you again, you have to draw into this well. It, listen, everything that you need is inside. There's only one thing that you need to ask Papa or Source or God for externally, and that is wisdom. How do you do this? That's the only thing you ask externally, but everything else, you look within. And so this courage, you're going to find within. This is going to be the thing that, that says, what I have, what I know, what I can do is so important that it must be shared with the world and that I am accepting of and aware of the truth that whatever it is that I am doing is not going to be accepted by everyone. See, that's the thing, like when Jesus walked the earth, he went places and he said some things and he went in the midst of people where he knew that his message was not gonna be received. He knew it, but that didn't stop him from going out and saying it nonetheless. You catch that? You have to dig inside, uh, drill down deep into your psyche, into your well, into your spirit, into your soul, into your mind, into your heart, and you're going to have to draw this out. First, you're going to have to understand that I am loved. I am loved and I am loved because I am love. And because I am love, I reflect love. I represent and manifest love. And then when you understand that, that builds up that confidence. And then you start getting people around you. And how many of you know that there's strength in numbers? <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I'm of the mindset that in a barroom brawl, I always say, as long as the numbers are not greater than four to one, it's a fair fight. I'm good, up to four. Beyond that, I either better have somebody in my corner or I better have a weapon. You see what I'm saying? You have to have numbers. But what happens is, is that the numbers, when you, ha when you know that you have the numbers, that you not only have a well that you could draw into yourself, but you have a well that you could draw into in others, this builds your confidence up into courage because now you're getting boldness. Now you're getting the ability to take what it is that is in your mind and in your heart and take it into hostile territory. You follow what I'm saying? Because the, the thing is, this world has been stained and has been damaged by religion. Religion has fucked up humanity in ways that we cannot even begin to estimate. But for those of us who have escaped from the orbital, uh, from the gravitational pull of religion and are now moving in a free orbit or a free space, now our, our heart's desire is to get as many people free as we are. And I'm going to tell you something that religion is not going to go quietly into the night. It is going to fight you with Every single precept, every single theory, every single theology, every single hermeneutic, every single bit of exegesis that it can to derail what it is that you're saying to help people get free. So in order for you to do this, you, brother, sister, my dog, you're going to have to have some courage. You're going to have to develop some kick acidity. <laughs> yeah, I just made that up. <laughs> you, you know, in other words, you're going to have to go in with the, with the idea that, you know, that I'm not going to knock on the door. I'm going to kick the son of a bitch in. And, and let the chips fall where they may. Because there is a time for diplomacy. There is a time for tact and, and uh, you know, basically trying to, um, you know, to be 
genteel, but then there's a time when you just, you know, you're just going to really have to go in and, and just run the, run the joint down. Okay. And you got to be prepared for that. And here's the other thing too, why connections are so important because see, if you have these connections, if you have the right connections, because watch this it, again, confidence will attract people, but courage encourages people. Do you see that? In order to really to be an encourager, you yourself have to have a well of courage which you can draw into that others see, that others can tap into. That's that's key. I mean, you know, we all say, you know, we want to be an encourager. I want to be an encourager. You know, people say, some people say, I want to be an influencer. I want to be an attractor. I want to operate in the law of attraction. All of that is good. But then there is a time when you're going to need to take people into places that they ordinarily won't go. Do you understand? That's the, that, that is the key to successful leadership. Because see, if, if you're just talking about somebody that's just managing things, just managing people, managing processes, you don't need courage for that. All you need is the understanding and the confidence to do it. But to take people into an area where they've never been. You know, I, I, I like to, I have so many people that, uh, that I like to draw on their stories, but one of my favorites is Elon Musk. You know, Elon Musk decided, hey, I'm going to build rockets and put shit into space. Okay. Yeah. There, there were, there were a lot of rocket scientists that were available that he was able to tap into, but what he had to do is he had to encourage these people, these young men and women that they were going someplace that they ordinarily couldn't go. These are, these were the people that they were smart enough, but maybe not, they didn't have the, I don't know, the disposition to be a part of NASA, but they were, but Elon Musk saw something in them and was able to push ahead or pull them into a destiny. See, that's what courage does. Courage takes people that they, that they have something inside of them, that they have an ability, that they have some knowledge, that they have confidence, but it says, okay, now let's take what we have and let's go conquer some shit. And here's the thing. I'm not talking about conquering people. Hear me. Because I think that's part of what's wrong with the world today is that, you know, we have this notion that we have to conquer people, that we have to put people under subjection. No, when, when we were given dominion from creation, it's, it was for to have dominion over the things of the earth, to have dominion over systems, not dominion over people. That was never the plan. But when you say, listen, we're going to go out there and we're going to out NASA, NASA. Or we're going to go out and out automotive Volkswagen and General Motors. Or, or, or if you're Jeff Bezos, you say we're going to go and out Walmart, Walmart. There is something that has to be innate in you or cultivated in you that, that takes people where they wouldn't want to go. Because see, listen, that's the only way the frontiers are pressed. That's the only way the envelope is pushed. That's the only way that we grow is to do the things that we ordinarily would not do. You know, it's, it's a funny thing. I'll tell you a story that when I was a child, I was shy. I was painfully shy. And not only that, I was a stutterer. And that was, you know, it, it just made life difficult. But once I understood what it meant to be confident, right? It, it changed everything. I began to say, I am a, an overcomer over my speech impediment, that I don't have to be shy because I'm not a light set under a bushel. I'm a city set on a hill. I have something valuable to offer humanity and I'm determined to get it out. And that's how I grew. But, but the thing is, is that I had to develop courage in order to do this. <laughs> and listen, you know, this is the thing that my, my glory moment is that I am the father of five sons and these guys operate with a level of confidence, a level of 
uh, boldness and connection and courage that I only dreamed of at their age. Matter of fact, you know, I had to, there were so many things that I had to cultivate in myself and, and, and I had to depend upon others to cultivate these things in me that this stuff just shows up in my kids' lives. You follow? They, these are, my sons are the guys that people line up to follow. They, people want, gravitate toward them and want to be with them. They want to be their friends. They want to help them do things or, or, to, or to have them help them do things. That's the key. So what I want you to, what I, this is, and let me just give you an exercise, a bit of homework, if you will. I want you to think about something that is in your heart to do. Something that you think that only you can do. And, and what I want you to do is I want you to spend a little time. And this weekend is a good time to start. Uh, is, you know, <laughs> we don't want to procrastinate. Now, I'll tell you, that's that's like one of my uh, one of my greatest uh, problems. One of my greatest handicaps is that I'm I'm also a procrastinator. But don't procrastinate. What I want you to do is this weekend is spend a little time learning about the thing that you are passionate about. The thing that you think that only you could make the difference that it could possibly make. Learn about that and, and start to envision yourself in doing this. Start to see yourself doing this thing that you think you are created with the potential to make a difference in this area. And then once you've seen yourself doing it, then begin to execute baby steps. Now, you, you might be able to just jump right in and go right at it. And if you can, that's great. Good on you. But some of us, we have to take baby steps. We have to, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, step by step by step by step until we get to a place where we're able to function in that realm. Then once you have begun to function in that realm, you're going to have to connect yourself with people who are doing the same thing or a similar thing. And, and when you connect with them. Basically, the way you're going to connect with them is through the law of attraction. What you project, you can expect. And you begin to project what your vision is, what your hopes, what your dreams are. And as you speak these things aloud, other people are going to hear them and they're going to latch on. So now you have your connections. And once you have your connections, then find out where do you need to take this where it is going to yield the greatest possible change. Now, you may not want to go into that theater of battle right away, but you can always go baby steps. Maybe start with some place where you know that you know that you know that what you say is going to be well received and you start there. Start by sharing it there because once you get there and you begin to see results and have success, then you can say, okay, I'm going to go increasingly, incrementally into places that it might be a little more difficult. And then once you have done that, you will have the boldness to go into the places where others will tell you it is impossible. See, I love the word impossible because you know what the word impossible means to me? It means an opportunity to make something possible out of nothing. See, that's the creative part of humanity because now you're taking what you have into a place that, listen, I, 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 I'm wearing my Star Trek shirt today and 
And I love Star Trek because the intro says to boldly go where no man has gone before, to boldly go where no human has gone before. And in the newer Trek uh, films, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Do you follow what I'm saying? You're getting this boldness that you're going to take into places that you never dreamed of going. Oh, man, I, I wish that somebody could just, I don't know, man, if, if, if you could just tap into what I'm saying and, and take this and run with it. Because, listen, you are created for success. You are created to win. You are created to subdue and prosper in your sphere of influence. Isn't that awesome? But the thing is, is that, you know, religion, I'm going to tell, listen, I'm at, at, literally any human problem that you could think of, I can lay it at the footstep or at the doorstep of religion. I, I blame religion for literally everything. But the thing is, is that if you, if you get this, you will go, religion will tell you, you can't do that. You can't do this. You can't, you can't go here. Can't do there. Can't, you know, can't say this, you know, as, as just like, um, People, people will say, well, you can't say Jesus and shit in the same sentence. <laughs> Bullshit. You can say it. The, the, the thing is, and, and here's the thing, I'm not bound by anything. I don't care because the, the reality is, is that frankly, you're not going to whip my ass. So with, with that being said, you're not going to take my life. So I'm not worried about that. I can say what I want. And, and here's the thing. My rights end where yours begin. Let me say that really succinctly. That my rights end where yours begin. I have the right to say and do anything that I want, but I don't have the right to hurt you. I don't have the right to hurt another human being. And, and, and so I'm very careful that when I say something, I'm not saying anything to hurt anyone. I'm deliberately, you know, going out of my way not to hurt anyone because that's not my right. Now, it's, it is certainly my right to speak my mind. But, you know, the, the thing is, is that, um, like, say, for example, I cannot insult you sexually or in, in, insult you racially or anything like that because that's hurtful. You know, and and because some people say, oh, well, you're, you're saying that pretty much you can say what you want. Yeah, you can say what you want. But you know something like Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. And I honestly believe, I honestly believe, you know, like that, you know, I mean, some people just need to get punched in the mouth. <laughs> you know, it's and it's not anything that's lastingly harmful. It just kind of teaches you a lesson about, you know, flapping your gums, as my dad would say. So, to kind of tie all this together, confidence, confidence. It's like when you know that you know that you know what you know. That you, you know, you, you consider yourself a subject matter expert or something like that, whatever. You, you know it. You know it. You may, not, you may not know it perfectly. You may not know it completely, but you know it enough to be functional and excellent at it. Then the second thing is, is connections. You got to have the connections. Don't let anybody tell you that you can be an island. You know, you don't need anybody. People will say, I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. You need people. And, and I'm going to tell you something. It work the numbers because the more friends or connections that you have, the more potential doors can be open because see, listen, contrary to popular belief, you know, people say God opens doors that no man can shut. Guess what? God don't open a single door, not nary a one, not one. God does not orchestrate, ordain or any of anything else, any doors, the doors that you come to, you'll either have to walk through the door that's been opened for you by someone else, or you will have to persuade them to open the door for you. That's the way it works, boys and girls. This, you know, it, it, there is a supernatural, but guess what? The super influences the natural. It does not supersede it. Got to catch that. So once you have your confidence and you have your connections, now you begin to find out where does this take me? And, and let me say this about that. 
Don't worry about the destination, y'all. Enjoy the journey. The trip is awesome. But you get people that are willing to be pioneers, to be trailblazers, to boldly go where no one has gone before. And if you can get that, then you will have built your courage. And let me tell you this, this is the really, really great, too good to be true news about this is that once you get your courage up for one thing, you'll get it for another and another and another, and another, and so on, and so on, and so on. And that's incredible. And once you reach that, there's no stopping you. You will become a vessel of self-fulfilling success. And that is what I have for you today. I hope that encourages you. Please, please, pretty please share this with somebody, uh, not because of me, take me out of the equation, but if you know somebody that, that would be blessed by this, that they'd be encouraged by this, that they'd be equipped or edified by this, please share it with them because I promise you that it will. Um, and also, if you're free on Sunday morning at around... I don't know. What is it? I, I forget the time because daylight savings time happened. But uh, I will be doing quantum spirituality on Sunday on the Global Online Ministry Alliance. And I would love to see you there. And so before I close, I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going scrolling, 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 scrolling. Well, there's a lot of people on here because I want to say hi to everybody. I want to acknowledge you for being here because... It's Friday night, man. You could be anywhere else. Big Crave, thanks for joining, brother. I love you, man. Edith, thank you for joining. Margaret, thank you for joining. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? I said my man Kyle Butler. Kyle, you're a blessing, brother. Love you, man. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Da, 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 da. Gloria, Gloria Boom, thank you for joining. Chris Roberts, my man, thank you for joining. My man from the 313. Uh, Billy Rosie Salinas, thank you for joining. Darren Pinkerton, man, long time no see, brother. Good to see you. Tony Hill, my old shipmate from Operational Test and Evaluation Force, thank you for joining, man. This, this cat was one of my best friends. And, and uh, hey, Hill, I got to tell you something, man. I talked to Lloyd yesterday. Really good conversation. We're, we're overdue to talk. So um, shoot me your number and, uh, and I will call you soon. Uh, okay, let's see. Who else do we have here? Michelle Brown, my sister. Listen, if you want to catch some real good down to earth, um, basically spirituality where rubber meets the road, listen to Michelle Brown on Tuesday nights. She will absolutely bless your socks off. She and Tammy Wilson. My man, Corey Nathaniel, the preacher machine from Trinidad. Love you, brother. Good to see you. Charles Knowles, thank you for joining. My cousin, Sharice, Reese Brooks is on. Love you, sis. Thank you for joining. Albie Martinez, thank you for joining. It was so good to have you here. David Eliff, thank you for joining. Henry Harris, listen, I, I'm going to tell you something. A cat that, that, that does some teaching, that does some preaching, that does some connecting, Henry Harris, that is my dude. I love Henry. Henry, you, you are a blessing. Uh, let's see who else do we have here. Dale O'Neill. Thank you for joining Dale. Thaddeus Warren. This is another guy. You got catch his live streams, man. This, this dude is just absolutely full of, of joy and of love. And I absolutely love just talking to him and listening to him. Um, he is a blessing. Wayne Wilson. Thanks for joining brother. Thank you for, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Kim, Kim Faber Barna, I always mess up your name. I'm so sorry, but I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Uh, let's see, who else here? Kelly Bailey. Ah, that's Capri Green's mama. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Kelly. It's so good to see you out here. Hope mama is doing good. Uh, love y'all so much. Talila, my, my niece. Uh, you know, I was just up in Jersey this weekend, uh, Talila, and I, I didn't see, um, I mean, you guys are, 
like not up there anymore. But um, I always, you know, I miss not seeing you guys when I uh, when I don't see you. But, you know, I want you to know your Uncle Derek loves you and is so, so very proud of you. Um, my man, Preacher Machine from Waco, Texas, Waylon Sias. That's one of my old preaching buddies, man. That Dude, it's good to see you out here. Josh Muncie. Josh Muncie. <laughs> Thanks for joining, brother. It's good to see you, too. Uh, let's see who else. Oh, and there's Capri. Capri ma <laughs> Capri's mama's watching, and Capri is watching. Capri, I'm going to tell you something. We need to get this girl on video because she is such a radiant personality and so full of um, wisdom uh, that belies her years. And she needs to do more live streams. Capri, do some more live streams, okay? Get your get your uh, your, your Mima on with you. That I think that would encourage you. And uh, my cousin Bryant Day is also on. And I think that that wraps up all of the shout outs. I want to thank you all for joining. I hope that you all have a fantastic weekend. Again, don't don't forget to join me on Sunday. Uh, and I'll just say. Um, for the for the sake of argument, um, let's say 11 a.m. Um, 11 a.m. Pacific time, or let's say 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'll be on with quantum spirituality, and I think that'll pretty much clear everybody else that's on the that's on the channel. Um, so that's about it. And also, uh, don't forget to tune in next week, Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the hot mic with me and my girl Angie my wife, Angela Day. So that's it. Um, love y'all. Namaste. Cheers and long life. Peace out.